Hello, my name is Kevin Foley. I'm a reporter with Phillipstown.info, and today we are interviewing the candidates for the position of trustee in Nelsonville. Uh, Nelsonville doesn't uh, regularly have contested elections, so there is a great deal of interest in this particular race. And we hope that uh, our interviews today, along with our other co coverage, will encourage people in Nelsonville to get out and vote on uh, March 15th. The polls will be open at the Village Hall between noon and nine o'clock. And uh, my first interview today is with Andy Maranti, who is the incumbent trustee in Nelsonville. Andy, welcome. Thank you, Kevin, good to be here. And why don't we start off by uh, speaking uh, about your background, about your history in uh, Nelsonville. Okay, um, <clears throat> I grew up in Cold Spring. I was born in New York during the war, Second World War. Um, came up here with, when my father was away in the service and my, um, I was raised in Cold Spring and then went away to college and graduated from Harvard College in Oneonta, a BA um, in sociology and um, went into the Navy for four years right after that where I met my wife in Japan and um, she came back with me and our two sons to this country right to Cold Spring. As a matter of fact, we lived in the apartment right next door to this building. Um, here on Main Street. On Main Street. For those who are watching. Yeah, on Main, Main Street. Street. Yeah. Right. Okay. And uh, um, as my kids started to grow up and got into school and stuff, I started getting involved. And first involvement was with Phillipstown Little League with the kids, you know. And in, uh, in the mid '80s, someone asked me, "Oh, in '72, we moved. We were looking for a house. We were in the apartment for two years. We were looking for a house, and then we found one in Nelsonville. It had uh, needed a lot of work, but I was pretty handy, so." And then we start fixing up, still doing it. Got involved. Someone asked me that uh, there was an opening on the Nelsonville board. Would I consider running? I said, sure. What do you have to do? I said, come on in. We'll show you. So it was pretty low key. So I uh, was on the Nelsonville board from I think about 1984 for probably six or eight years. And uh, then uh, I went from the Nelsonville Village Board to the Zoning Board of Appeals in Nelsonville, which is you know as most people around here know is a unique uh, in entity in itself and it has its own zoning code and its own right. zoning and planning boards. And, uh, then the and the zoning board is where you would go to appeal? If you was a building inspector and he uh, denied your application for something uh, because you have to have the right of appeal with zoning codes, you would appeal it to the zoning board of appeals and uh, then they would hear your Right. appeal and uh, grant or deny your application okay and uh, so I was on that board for about three or four years and you can't be on both the village board and the zoning board at the same time it's, right it's a conflict and uh, I moved from that to uh, the Haldane school board I ran for that now I'm not as sure the exact timeline because I've been involved in a lot of things so sure that's okay but picking the package together I was on the Haldane school board for uh, uh, three years and then uh, I ran um, there was an opening on the town board, or it would be, uh, and I ran um, to the town board and was successful with the help of the other members of the board. We worked together pretty good. Um, and I served two terms on, it, on the Phillips Town, town Board. Uh, at the time, I was also liaison, you know, town board oversight on both the zoning and planning boards to keep communications with the, the town board itself and what was going on with those two boards. Right. Um, then uh, I made an attempt to run for a county legislator and uh, came in second. And uh, so that was a tough, that was a tough haul. It took a better part. It took a lot out of me and it cost quite a bit. So, but then the uh, position opened up again on the Nelsonville board and I ran for it because the former mayor um, passed and uh, the position came open and I ran for a position and was successful in Nelsonville. Again, it run unopposed at the time. Right, now, I just wanted to clarify that during all these government positions, you were also working full time. Oh, yeah, I was working. Yeah. Okay, that's what I, I was wanted gonna, to fill yeah, in. Yeah, I was going okay, I was going to get back to that. Sure. Uh, in 1970, I started with uh, what was then Penn Central Railroad. All right. And sure. uh, until they were dissolved and became Conrail about six years later. And then, of course, that was a government creation. They wanted to get rid of that. And then New York State set up Metro North in 80, 84, I believe it was. I worked with, for Metro North until I retired in 94. And uh, so, put 34 years in with the railroad, 
in uh, in Harmon, Croton in, Harmon. And what was your? Uh, I, I started out as an electrician, and I finished as a, an instructor of new electricians, and okay. a technician. Uh, my kids all both went to Haldane from K through 12, as I did, and my brothers and my sister. There's four of us you know, siblings, and my father was a village cop for 34 years, and uh, he was the first fire chief of the Cold Spring Fire Company. My brother's been a member of the fire company, my younger brother John, so we've been involved in the community in many, in many ways for many years, you know, and it just sort of comes naturally to us. And uh, I like Nelsonville because it's small and, uh, you know, people know who you are and they can stop you on the street and they tell you you got a problem and you try and solve it, and we do most of the time. And we pay particular attention to individual problems like people want stop signs or people, people's gutters are sewer lines are plugged up. We have one private line on Pearl Street and people always come to us and try and straighten that out. And we're going to work on a program to try and put a, a pub, convert a private line into a public line on there and help these people out because the private line was put in many, many years ago and it's, it's not in very good shape. Okay. And so I told people because of work I did on the town board, I know the process to go through to, to get it converted from private to public. Mm -hmm. And so as soon as the weather breaks, we'll get started on that. I tried in 1979 to do something, but it got very complicated. And I wanted uh, the public lines in the whole block area where I work, where I live, which constitutes a large portion, a portion of the, the village, you know. Right. Now, when you look uh, at your service, and here I'm talking specifically about Nelson. Yeah, right. Uh, what would you say you're most proud of in terms of your record? I'm talking to well, the availability for the public. Anybody who wants to call me can call me and. Uh, we try to solve their problems. You know, somebody has a tree that's uh, you know, impeding or threatening their home. We'll get it taken care of right away. Road work is, you know, it's a, it's the nitty gritty stuff. We've kept the budget very slim, uh, as I said in one of my articles that uh, we out uh, contracted out garbage collection, which we used to have our own highway department. You run into the uh, uh, problems of. Uh, uh, um, trying to think, uh, retirement and unemployment costs and stuff like that by contracting out. We've eliminated a lot of these. Oh, you mean the, the, the financial burdens financial for, the, burdens, for yeah. the village? Right. Okay. So we contract out garbage, we contract out uh, street maintenance and uh, snow plowing. Just a few years ago we started contract because the fire company was not, couldn't sustain itself, mm -hmm. uh, a small village like that. So we contract with the village of Cold Spring for fire protection, a number of issues, you know. So we've gotten rid of the, uh, the overhead of the maintenance on these financial situations, you know, so. Right, and the, the long-term costs. Yeah, long-term costs, so. And um, as far as um, every day, you know, I'd stop in the village halls and check with the clerk, see what's going on, if somebody needs something addressed or something. We have a problem with zoning issue. One of the residents uh, has a problem with zoning. We try and take care of it right then and there, you know. So it's, uh, the biggest thing is, uh, right, right now, I mentioned in the, my uh, announcement that we're trying to complete a seven year long federal grant to get four of our worst streets taken care of. And finally, it should be coming to fruition this year. We're talking about paving and that kind of thing? Well, reconstructing a couple of them. Okay. It really got bad because we applied for the grant two Congress people ago. It's taken that long to get ah. the money. We actually still don't have the money, but it's in the works. The engineers have been contracted and they've had the plans approved by the state. So these are the four worst roads in the village are going to be taken care of this year. But uh, because it took so long, the money is not nearly as uh, um, the amount that we started out. We asked for 250, we're down to about 160 in value. Uh -huh. So I'm going to try and- Oh, just over the- Because of the waste of, of time. The passage and, uh, of time, right. less, bu less buying power. So what I'm trying to talk to the other board members, the other board member and the, and the mayor is, we have no debt in the village. So what we'll do is take one, one street a year, bond it, fix it, and do it the right way. And we're not going to fool around the federal government anymore. Just, and everybody's, you know, states having problems. So right now we're in good shape financially. We watch the budget carefully, mm -hmm. and we make do. And uh, something comes up, we usually have the money to take care of it. A tree that's causing a hazard to, or uh, whatever. Like this year, everybody, Village of Cold Spring, the town of Phillipstown, Nelsonville, we had to contract out for extra people to remove the snow, you know, so people could sure. park. And we had that money in the budget, you know for a rainy day. Money. Right, right. Are there other initiatives that you're working on that people should know about? 
at the moment we don't have anything outstanding. I mean, just uh, maintaining uh, contact with the people. I mean, the I, last I, I, I understand there's been some discussion uh, about consolidating the uh, oh. the court system. Yeah, well, I'm glad you mentioned that. <laughs> yeah, that's not a big initiative, but it is an initiative. We've been working uh, through the good graces of Sandy Gallif to help us do that. And we're working with Cold Spring and Phillipstown, the mayor of Cold Spring and the supervisor of Phillipstown. The first uh, initiative is fairly easy with the court. We're going to combine the courts however we can do it. I mean, the, the initiative has already been started now. Mm -hmm. The mechanics of it will be worked out. Uh, my thing is I'd like to uh, combine as much as possible the building, our building department. I don't know if Cold Spring is able to, but I think I know we have precedent in Nelsonville because when I was on the board the first time in the 80s, I was on the town zoning board as well. Nelsonville used Phillipstown's building inspector, code enforcement officer, to do our uh, uh, permitting process. Even though Nelsonville maintained the zoning board, we used the town's code enforcement officer because we didn't have that much going on. With the completion of the 11 homes on Billy's Way, there's not much more room for development in Nelsonville. There might be a single house here or there, somebody putting an addition on their right. house or a swimming pool or a deck, but not a lot going They're on. Very occasional. It's very occasional. And I don't think we need to maintain a building department, you know, and uh, I've already talked to the town building department. I've talked to the town supervisor. So that's something I'm going to get going on this year and see if we can do that. So they're really the initiatives. And there's other things that come up in the village administration that we may talk to the village of Cold Spring or the town of Phillipstown to do. I mean, Phillipstown already does the assessing for everybody, the villages and right. school. So, I mean, that's something that was taken away from us a long time, unfortunately, mm -hmm. and gladly. I understand you've expressed previously some concern about the uh, fire hydrant system. Yeah, well, you know, we had the fire a, year, a little over a year ago. And right. That was really a, a wake-up. A, wake a large call. house right on Main Street yeah, next to a, the town about hall. the highest point in the two villages, you know, it's really right. a wake-up call. We've got two hydrants that we the villages purchased, and we're working with Village Cold Spring now to hire their village crew to install them. A couple of spots uh, in the village where we really have some very old and antiquated hydrants. We're not even sure they're working. We, they get tested every year. The village comes around and they pump all the hydrants. The village is working, at, especially our mayor, because he's an integral part of the Cold Spring Fire Department, to put two dry hydrants in, one down by uh, Foundry Brook towards the cemetery and another one in another location. Now, we just got DEP, um, DEC approval from the state. Okay, to put that's the, one the in. Department of Environmental, Environmental Conservation. Conservation right? Right. Okay. So we got approval for the first one. Now we just have to put it in to provide, because uh, that creek is running all the time, all year long. Yes. So we'll have a nonstop source of water. We won't have to run to the river to get water. And then when we decide where the best place is, we'll put the second one in. Okay. But in the meantime, we want to pl replace two others right in the heart of the village, you know. Okay. They're just old and antiquated. Right. So are there any other uh, aspects of either your uh, personality or your record that you want uh, people to be aware of as they well, uh, go as to vote? Kind of as I said in my announcement, uh, I. Uh, I'm retired, I'm here all the time, I'm available to anybody who wants to call me anytime or see me on the street, you know, and I'm at the village hall at least once a day and they leave a message with the clerk and she'll let me know. And so it's, it's small, it's close and uh, we found out how much history we have five years ago or six years ago now, in uh, 2005 I was chairing the uh, Cisco Centennial Committee for Nelsonville. Okay, that's 150 years. 150 yes. years, okay. yeah, okay, thank you for reminding everybody. But uh, we did. We dug into a lot of the history, and there's a lot of history in Nelsonville, you know. Um, I think that I, I ran across this statement one time where Nelsonville actually, before it adopted its name in 1855, that it was actually called West, or yeah, West Cold Spring. So, <laughs> it's, you know, and there's a lot of changes that have gone on in the in the two villages, and uh, I've watched a lot of them change and how things have changed and developed, you know, on Main Street in particular, you know, and how Cold Spring has become a real magnet. We get overflow in Nelsonville too. We have our own very small little mini mall on Main Street, but right. I've always considered two villages really two arms of the same body, you know. Mm -hmm. uh, as much a part of Cold Spring as Nelsonville. Just about equal time in both of them now at my age, so you know, I have I don't really draw any distinctions other politically between the two villages, you know. And uh half my family lives in Cold Spring anyway, so and uh 
half my history is here too. So. Okay. Okay. All right. Well, thank you very much. Thank you. And best of luck okay. in the election. Thank you.